and welcome, welcome to, to the Zatty, Zatty Show. Show. That's Arthur. That's Amber all the way over there. And we are back for episode five, where we will be going through our top 10 games for Tabletop Gaming Spring Showcase this weekend. Hence why we're outside to celebrate spring and what a lovely day it is. Um, unfortunately for us, it's really <laughs> sunny. Can't 100% can't see, um, but we'll just go with that. So we're going to power through, not normally this squinty, but it'll be fine. So Tabletop Gaming have cancelled their regular Tabletop Gaming Live later on this year. We're a bit gutted about that, but instead we have got this spring showcase last weekend of March. So we're really excited to be attending this one virtually. Yeah, it's really interesting actually, because this was our first event together for Zatu um, just over a year ago, 2019 September. So a bit more than a year. What were your favourite memories from that event? To be totally honest, there were, every corner of the room had a different food stand. So over the weekend, me and a couple others tried to get through as many of them as we could because it was a two, three day event. Didn't quite manage, so I was excited to give that another crack this year, but that one will have to wait for next year. So your favourite thing about a board game event was the food. Yeah. That's great. That's a great start for this show. Um, we'll keep going with that. I did also play a lot of the mind. Any customer that was kind of nearby hovering on the stand, I'd just pull them over and make them play until we got to like level six. So made some enemies and friends. <laughs> what did you like? Um, yeah, so I actually enjoyed the main point of the show, which was just to try a load of new games, see all the new releases, um, got taught a lot of new games by our very own bloggers who were there, which was a really nice experience. Usually we just, they all over the country, but we all assembled them. It was kind of like the Avengers, but not quite <laughs> Bloggers cool. assemble. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they taught me Azul. That was one of the games I really enjoyed. I did, I did get taught it wrong to start with, but I persevered. So let's get on with the show. So let's just get straight into it. We'll be going into our top 10 games that we've put on the sale for Spring Showcase this weekend. We've got our Zatu hoodies on, we're back together in the cold and we mean business. So let's get into our top 10. Up first, we have Disney's Marvel Villainous. The key word there being Marvel. Of course, this has got all your favourite uh, Marvel characters in, uh, the Avengers, obviously. In Villainous, the main selling point, I suppose, is that you play as the bad guys trying to win. What I do like about Villainous, you, there is an element of wanting the good guys to win, though, because you want to be the first villain to fulfil your objective. So I would play Iron Man on Thanos, for example, and be like, come on, Iron Man, but leave me alone. Um, the other characters in the game are Taskmaster, not the Channel 4 TV series, Killmonger, and couldn't memorise them all, Hela. It might be another one, um, but we'll just brush over that. The other good point about this game is absolutely beautiful. The artwork on the cards is amazing. So if you love the original Villainous games and you love Marvel, this is one of the ones to get for you. So number two on our top 10 list is Tribes from Thames and Cosmos. I think there's a really good deal on this one at the minute on the website, so make sure you get your hands on it. We do have a lot of stock, but it might go soon, so make sure you check it out. In this game, you'll be playing through 30,000 years of civilization just in that short time frame of 45 minutes gameplay. So basically like how March has gone so far, to be honest, well for us anyway. So in this game, we finally have a civilization game that won't take you all day to play like the others may do. Um, as you should be able to see, there should be some footage over this of the game components themselves. It has really, really nice artwork as well, so it'll look nice on your game table. Next up, we've got Double Harry Potter. Um, how can I explain this? Well, it's double with a Harry Potter theme. And that's really all there is to it. No, if you haven't played Double before, it's a great snap game, a lot quicker pace, and you're just going to want to play this over and over and over again. The Harry Potter artwork is kind of cartoony, which is a really nice touch to the game. Um, I would just advise it can get very competitive, so clear your playing space of breakable, damageable goods. So next up we have got Talisman Legendary Adventures, which is a bit heavier than Double Harry Potter for sure, but maybe not quite as heavy as you think. So this obviously comes from the base game Talisman, and this is more of a good gateway game if you want to get into Talisman, you can have all the fun of the regular game with a lot less playtime. So this one might be nice for younger players. So in this game, you will go through five different adventures to save all of the lost talismans. And next game up is another party game because clearly I cannot be trusted to talk about any more complicated games than that. Maybe after the disaster that was the Fox weird game. Let's not talk about that, that was in the past. Um, anyway, Anomia. This is a game where, as I said, a party game, I'll quickly, probably the best way to explain it to you is just to run you through it. So. 
you'll have a deck of cards. Each person keeps adding from the center to their deck of cards. Each card has a symbol and a category. If you will keep going around revealing cards, if your uh, symbol matches somebody else's symbol, you are then in a head-to-head -to, -head to see who can call out a name from the category on the other player's card as quickly as possible. For instance, if Amber has a triangle and I draw a triangle, and on her triangle it says, name the best presenter of the Zasu show, Amber. for example. Okay, that's not how it went in rehearsal, so I hope we're going to be using the rehearsal clip. So our next game is Ticket to Ride London. So this will bring you all the enjoyment of Ticket to Ride, compacted down into 15 minutes. So this is a really good streamlined version. If you don't have long or you need to fill a game between heavier games, I would say this one's got quite good replayability because it only takes 15 minutes, you can keep going until you win. Next up, we've got New York 1901. Now this game has only just come into Zatu. It's been, we've been, our procurement team has been working really hard and we finally got that massive shipment we were after. I've had this game personally for a while. Um, it's really good. It's kind of like Tetris, but a board game. But then maybe it's not because there's no computerized element. Once the pieces are placed, you don't eliminate them. So not really then. Yeah, not really like Tetris at all. But they do have some strange shaped pieces. So what you've got to do is place those pieces on the board, scoring your points to recreate the New York of the early 20th century. Our next game is Alvama Lama 2. So would it even be an episode of the Zatu show if I didn't pick up big potato games? I love them, they're my favourite, so we had to put one of these in our top 10. So if you already have Obama Lama, the second one will bring you I think over 500 new cards and if you don't I'm pretty sure you can still play it anyway so it works either way. So for this game as you can probably tell all about rhyming. We did try this yesterday and it turns out I am absolutely horrific at this game. Can't rhyme, it's quite embarrassing actually so we will be trying the one out later on in the show. Final one for me is Ice Cool or as I found out yesterday Ice School or Ice School? I I don't know. Basically, they've tried to do a pun on school and ice. Um, so basically, it's kind of like Sabutio, if you guys remember what that was. Um, you've got um, to flick these penguins around a course, shoot them through the goals. Each player takes a turn. Um, but beware, there is the penguin hall monitor trying to tr track you down and send you back to class, where you'll learn about all those cool penguin things, like how to survive in the Arctic. That's probably a useful class. Um, but yeah, really great, fun, different game for uh, all the family, or if you just want to have a laugh, just mess around, it's a great game. So the final game of our top 10 games for Tabletop Gaming Spring Showcase, and possibly the most exciting, is Roots. So this is a great game for two to four players where you will battle for control of the vast wilderness. It has a lot of strategic depth, but the payoff is really rewarding. But bear in mind, this one is a bit hard to teach new people. I tried to learn it and failed. So hopefully you'll have some more luck than I did. And while we're talking about Roots, let's talk about our, this month's giveaway. So this month you can win not only Roots, but it's two expansions and they are Underworld and Clockwork. All you have to do to enter our competition is like, subscribe and comment down below your favourite board game expansion. Last month's winner of Photosynthesis was Adrian Smith. His comment was his favourite season was Summer and that reminded him of Barron Park. Really nice one, definitely my favourite season. Really not thriving in the winter so looking forward to get some sunshine again. Um, a couple of honourable mentions for really nice comments we got is Laura, who said that her favourite season is spring with Takanoko with the lovely cherry blossom tiles. And then Stephen, whose favourite season is autumn with the board game Hanabi, because you've got the fireworks, all just those cosy November vibes. And to finish off the show today, we're going to be playing a few rounds of Obama Lama 2, not only to show you what a great game it is, but to, for Amber to try and redeem herself and, you know, Show everyone that she does understand rhyming. I'm going to give it my all, but this is probably going to be the most embarrassing episode for me. So, producer Beth, over to you. Okay, so I have a series of Obama Lama cards for you. Some of my favourites. Same old rules. First one, shout it out. Ready? I'm ready yeah. to win. Sherlock and Doctor Strange actor dealing with an itch. I don't know who that is. Doctor, don't. No, wait, 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 wait. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Scratch. I'm having a scratch. You can't just shout out scratch. <laughs> One point to Arthur, I'm afraid. But, fine. You're close. Okay, round two. Castaway actor and voice of Woody from Toy Story wearing figure hugging underwear. Tom Hanks wearing Spanx. 
<laughs> now the point to Arthur. Come on, Arthur. I, I couldn't think of Tom Hanks. Okay, an easy one. Fingers on buzzers. I'll give you an opportunity. Oh, thanks. Beyonce's husband having a duvet day. Jay Z being lazy. Yes. Yes. Well done. One point to Amber. Coming back. Okay. I've got this now. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Thick eyebrowed supermodel is bouncing up and down. Kai Delevingne on a trampoline. Yes. <laughs> we love a redemption. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, 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 have you told? Are these ones you've actually told Amber before? Oh, she would never. Shockingly, no. I asked, she wouldn't show me. Are you doubting Amber's ability? I mean, after yesterday, yes, I am. <laughs> I am doubting her ability. Okay. School of Rock actor making a noise like a duck. Jack Black going quack. Uh, yes! Uh, <laughs> how does this happen? I'm winning. Yeah. We're going to keep playing until I win. That's how this is going, by the way. <laughs> Shaun of the Dead star is impersonating a flamingo. I haven't seen Shaun of the Dead. I've, my mind's got blank. So oh, good if you impersonate a flamingo. Shaun of the Dead star is impersonating a flamingo. I can picture him. I've forgotten his name. That's terrible. This is what happens in these kind of games. I think I'm going to say pass. They stand on one leg. Okay. Okay. But I don't so, know who the guy is. Simon Pegg standing on one leg. Yes! yes! Okay. Shout out to the uh, Harry Potter double for this one. <laughs> Ron Weasley has run out of money. Rupert Grint is skint. Yep. Last one. Mufasa's son in The Lion King is yelling a certain word after chopping down a tree. Simba shouting timber. Yes, I yes. Also helps that Timber's my favourite song of all time, so... So the results are in, and I can reveal that the winner is... Arthur! <laughs> well done. I, I, was, I was worried there for a second, but I do think you redeemed yourself. So, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this month. Be sure to check out our top 10 games and enter our competition for your chance to win a copy of... Root, nearly forgot the name, and it's two expansions. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed this video brought from the wilderness. So if you do have time, make sure you head over to our page on Spring Showcase. We'll have an exclusive giveaway over there as well. Won't tell you what it is, so you will have to go check that one out. And we'll see you next month. See you next month. Bye, Enjoy everyone. Spring Showcase. <laughs>